So, in the previous lecture, we introduced the notion of connectedness and one of the most basic uh, spaces is the interval are the closed intervals a comma b inside r. So, today we will prove that these are connected. So, let us just begin. So, proposition the interval 0 1 is connected. So, proof. So, let us assume that zero one is not connected. Right. So then there exists non empty open sets U and V uh, such that these are also disjoint. Zero one is the disjoint union U, disjoint union V. Right. Okay. So, we may assume, so one of these contains 0, so we may assume that it is in U, 0 belongs to U. All right. So, let us consider the set S is equal to those x in 0, 1 such that this entire interval 0 x is contained in u. Right? So, if we were to make a picture, so this is our interval 0 1, right? our u may be some combination of open sets and v is also some open subset, so that u and v are disjoint. Right? So, we are assuming that so, let us say u is put, yeah. it could be a complicated open set, we do not know what it looks like, but it contains 0. right? So, this x, this s is defined as the set of all those x's such that this entire closed interval 0 x is contained in u. Okay. Uh, so, clearly s is non empty because 0 is in s, right? because as the closed interval 0 comma 0, this is just equal to singleton 0, this is definitely in u. Right. Uh, now, let A be the supremum x. So, we take the supremum over all elements of A. Yeah. So, we claim that A is in U. Yeah. So, by the definition of supremum, right, by the definition of supremum, there is a sequence of x n in x such that x n converge to x x n converge to A, sorry. So, let us call this A n. Uh, so, now as u uh, as v is open, as v is open in this interval 0 1 and u is the complement of v, this implies that u is closed in 0 1. Right? And since u is closed and each a n belongs to u. Each a n belongs to u because a n is in S implies 0 comma a n 
is subset of u. In particular, a n also belongs to u, right? So therefore, and a n is converged to, so u is closed. A n belongs to u, and a n is converged to a. These together imply that a also belongs to u. Okay. So a we have proved that a is in u. So now note that as a n is in S, this implies this interval 0 a n is in u by the definition, which implies when we take union n greater than equal to 1, 0 a n, this is also contained in u. Okay. So now uh, observe that. So if we make a picture, so this is a point A and we have the sequence of a n's a 1, a 2. They do not have to increase necessarily, but they will converge to a. They are going to get closer and closer to a. Okay. So now if you take any point y, which is strictly less than a, right? so then we can choose an epsilon neighborhood around a, which does not contain y. right? And for all n sufficiently large, the a n's will be contained in this epsilon neighborhood. Right. So therefore, this implies that for any y in uh, 0 comma a, any y which is greater than or equal to 0 and strictly less than a, we will have that y belongs to 0 comma a n for n sufficiently large. Right. So this shows that 0 comma a, this half open interval is contained in u. And plus we have proved that a is as we have already proved that a is in u. Right? So this implies that the interval 0 comma a, this closed interval is contained in u. Okay. Uh, so now from now we claim that a has to be equal to 1. Okay. If a is not equal to 1, so if a is strictly less than 1, right? so once again we have 0, we have 1 here and let us say a is somewhere over here, then there is a silent positive such that the interval a minus epsilon comma a plus epsilon intersected with 0 1. So, a minus epsilon intersected with 0 1, uh, this is contained in u. Okay. Uh, so, we can choose a plus epsilon such that a plus epsilon is strictly less than 1. We can do this as a is strictly less than 1. Uh, so, this implies that a comma this inter this half open interval is contained in u, which implies that zero comma a we already know is contained in u, so therefore the union silent is contained in u. So, which implies that zero comma a plus epsilon is contained in u, which implies that so this is epsilon by 2, this interval a plus epsilon by 2 is completely contained in u. Okay. So, uh, but this contradicts the fact that, so this implies that a plus epsilon by 2 is in S. Right, but this contradicts the fact that A is the supremum of elements in S. Right. So therefore, thus A is forced to be 1. Right. In particular, so this implies that this entire interval 0, 1 is contained in U, which contradicts 
non emptiness of v right thus 0 comma 1 uh, cannot be disconnected so this implies that 0 comma 1 is connected so this completes the proof Okay. So, let us make a remark. So, a slight modification of the above proof. Shows that when A and B are two real numbers such that a is strictly less than b, then the closed interval a comma b is connected. Okay. So, we just have to uh, imitate the proof uh, and that is easy. So, this is left as an exercise. But we can do this in a simpler way, which we will just see, which we will see immediately. So, uh, not immediately, a little later. So, as a corollary of this, let us show that R with the standard topology is connected. So, proof if not, then we can write. R as the disjoint union of two open sets, where u and v are disjoint, non-empty open subsets. Okay, so we can choose any a in u and b in v, and without loss of generality, may assume. that uh, A is strictly less than B. Right? So, then intersecting this relation R is equal to U disjoint union V with the interval A B, this implies A B intersected with U disjoint union A B intersected with V. Uh, so, as so both sets are non empty, are non empty as A is contained in AB intersection U and B is contained in AB intersection V, right. So, this gives uh, uh, this shows that A B is disconnected. The interval A B is disconnected. Which is a contradiction. Right? Because both these are open subsets in the subspace topology on AB and here AB has a subspace topology. So, yeah. So, therefore, we have written the interval AB as a disjoint union of two non-empty open subsets. Yeah. So, which contradicts the fact that AB is disconnected. Uh, okay. So, as a corollary of this, right. So, let us try to understand what are all the connected subspaces of R. Right? So, let y be a non empty connected subspace of R. Right? 
So then y is one of the following. So basically, it's an interval. So, so a comma b are real numbers with a strictly less than b. Okay, let's just take less than equal to b. Right? Either this or a comma infinity okay so let us prove this so the idea is simple so we just let we let a to be we define a to be infimum y in y, y and b to be supremum y in y, y. Right. So, here we have a real line and our y is some subset. So, we take the infimum of infimum and supremum of all elements in y. Right. Uh, so, then a is less than equal to b. So, note that a and b they are allowed to be plus minus infinity. Uh, so, if a is equal to b, uh, so this clearly implies that y is just the single sense that is set a. Right. Uh, so, I leave this as an exercise, right, and clearly, clearly in this case, y is connected and equal to. This interval a comma a. Okay, so if a is strictly less than b, then we claim that the open interval a comma b is contained in y. Okay, so if not, then there exists c, which is contained in this open interval, such that. C does not belong to Y, right? So A is over here, and B is over here, and there is some C such so that C is not in Y. But then this will imply that we can write Y as um, Y intersection minus infinity comma C is joint union Y intersection C comma infinity. So let's check that this is not empty. Right. So, as A is the infima of elements in Y, there is a sequence uh, converging sequence in Y which converges to A and since A is less than C, so there will be elements of the sequence in the interval elements in the sequence which are strictly less than C. So, this shows that this is not empty and similarly this is not empty. Right, because B is the supremum of elements in Y, so there will be a sequence of elements converging to B and since B is strictly greater than C, so almost all members of the sequence will be uh, greater than C. Right, so thus, uh, this gives a contradiction, so this contradicts the assumption. that y is connected because we have written y as a disjoint union of uh, non empty open subsets right uh, so thus the interval a comma b is contained in y right y has the subspace topology and in the subspace topology both these sets are uh, open And also notice that uh, 
y is contained in a comma b right as uh, a is equal to infimum of elements in y y and b is equal to supremum of elements in y y right thus we have a comma b is contained in y is contained in a comma b okay so uh, this part is relevant only if a and b are finite and from this so from this we can easily conclude that y has to be of the type mentioned okay so this is left as an exercise So, uh, this result it gives us a description of the in of the connected subsets of the real line. Okay. So, next we want to see a very useful proposition which talks about how the interaction of connectedness and continuous maps. So, proposition. Let f from x to y be a continuous map. Okay, so assume x is connected. Right. So then, f of x, which has a subspace topology from y. So, the proof is easy. So, let us see, right. If, if not, then there exist open subsets u and v such that uh, f of x is the disjoint union of f of x intersected u and f of x intersected v. Okay. So, these are open subsets in y, u and v are open subsets in y, in y. So, let me emphasize that u intersection v need not be empty, right. Uh, so, what is given? We are assuming that f of x is disconnected, which means there are two open subsets in f of x, but every open subset of f of x is of the type f of x intersection intersected with u. So, therefore, we can we can only say that f of x intersected with u and f of x intersected with v, these two open subsets of f of x are disjoint. So, need not be empty. So, this is just a word of caution. Okay. So, uh, and uh, and both these f of x intersection u and f of x intersected with v are non empty. Okay, so so note that this implies that we can easily check that x is equal to f inverse of u disjoint union f inverse of v. So this is an easy check, and 
видите. Okay. So, uh, moreover, as f of x intersected u is non empty, this implies f inverse u is non empty. And similarly, f inverse v is non empty. Right. So, as f is continuous, both f inverse u and f inverse v are continue are open. Yeah. So, thus we have written x as a disjoint union of non empty open subsets, but this contradicts the connectedness of x. Right. So, thus f of x is connected in the subspace to function. So, we will see several useful applications of this proposition that we proved. Uh, so, we will end this lecture here.